Okay guys, I don't do a lot of videos like this, but my daughter and I just got back from a two week trip to Colorado last night. And before I unpack everything, I wanted to give a quick overview of our 2005 Toyota Sequoia and the setup that I did for our uh, two week trip. Um, quick facts about the Sequoia. It's got a two and a half inch lift, uh, ARB, OME lift, uh, some Pro Comp alloy wheels, and some Goodyear uh, tires. Two, sorry, 265, 70, 70, 17s. Sorry for the shaky video, I'm not a videographer. Uh, front and rear, I put the OME Fenton Mill trim spacers in the back to get it leveled with a load. It's raining out, hopefully you can hear me. Um, got a, the auto vent shade uh, visors. These are the in-channel ones. I think they look a lot cleaner than the stick-on ones over it. Uh, the windows go up okay and down okay. They were a little sticky at first, but then they loosened up and they're okay. Um, got some cheap uh, <laughs> covers from Cabela's. These trail gears are like 30 or 35 bucks a piece. WeatherTech floor liners. Um, only other mod in the front here really is just this uh, Amazon. Sorry, it's hard to see. I'm really terrible. Um, uh, Amazon extendable phone mount. Having it resting on the dash here keeps it pretty secure going down bumpy roads, whereas the magnetic one is jumping all over the place and falling. The phone is falling off. So, anyways, uh, before I get any further, um, big shout out to Nathaniel Wise, the Frasers, and Wasatch Moto Overland. Uh, for all their ideas. This is kind of a culmination of a lot of their videos and a uh, big influence by those three. Um, I've got a raised platform in here, four foot wide, uh, 72 or so inches long with the trifold foam topper mattress. Um, got that idea from Wasatch Moto Overland. Um, yeah, let's jump into it. I'll go into the front here for the rear view doors. This was my daughter's side of things. Those are her keens here still. Um, the box is split kind of 70-30 with two piano hinges um, and these little not quite paracords. It's like climbing cords, a little heavier duty than paracord. But uh, I'm going to set you down for a second while I open it up. Okay, so it opens up and clips right up here, which is just a, a carabiner with some more cord to the grab handle. I've got another carabiner with a couple more carabiners just for holding stuff. A couple hooks with a, a line here for hanging wet swimsuits or clothes or towels or whatever to dry. Um, nothing has been permanently changed inside the vehicle where it can't go back to completely uh, stock. So on this side, this is where my daughter had all her clothes she already unpacked. Um, she had a few bins in here and then she had a duffel bag here with all of her clean clothes and then different uh, toiletry bags um, and other things in here. This was her side. And then my side was over here. Same setup, toiletry bags, hats and gloves, uh, clean clothes. I got a raincoat in here now that's kind of taking up space, but whatever. Clean clothes up there. Um, the way I held this box in place is by sinking a, basically making a two by four block and screwing it screwing the box to it and then drilling it through at an angle to match the angle for the rear seat hold down bolts that goes straight through um, might be kind of hard to see but right right into there uses a stock bolt stock angle stock location um, the box is made of one by tens on the sides 
and in the middle, I think this is three eighths inch plywood. I wanted to go as thin and light as possible. Um, so I do have some supporting two by twos here and in the middle and different other places to kind of firm it up. The bottom is super thin, uh, maybe quarter inch or five sixteenths inch, something like that. Uh, like subflooring material. Um, didn't need anything really heavy duty. It's not super tough inside here, but it doesn't need to be for what's going in here. And everything is all screwed together, normal screws and everything. So <clears throat> I'm gonna put this down. I do need two hands, so hold on a second. Okay, so that's down, that's how it is. I didn't put any latches or anything like this. Um, again, it's just closed. I didn't have any problems with it staying shut or anything like that. My daughter kept her keens here, maybe some sandals here. Um, this is our cooler. It's like a 26 quart Ozark Trail, $100 cooler. Originally, I bought a fridge. They sent me one that was too big. I sent it back, I bought a different one. Got it in here, got it installed and it just killed my battery way too fast. And at that point I was looking at another five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a battery pack and possibly some solar things for a fridge. Um, I didn't want to be a thousand dollars into something I'm hardly ever going to use. So I just bought this hundred dollar cooler. It's been great. It keeps ice for at least three days, uh, probably more. And it's been, like I said, it's been, it's been really good. So. Uh, that just sits here on a little platform that I built. Uh, I'm going to move the cooler and I'll show you the platform I built for it. Okay, so originally I built this platform for a fridge and this wasn't here and the fridge fit in there perfectly. Um, it was great, it was snug. You know, I uh, notched this out to conform to the speaker mold here. Uh, kind of uh, cut this at an angle or at a radius here so it didn't hit with the cup holder there. Uh, and then what I ended up doing was hinging it here. So hinged it, it's got two legs, one there, one there, and I keep my laptop underneath it. Um, so it just sits down perfectly, it's plenty Plenty solid, plenty rigid. When I moved away from the fridge setup, though, I wanted to keep the latches for the cooler above the top of this so that they didn't interfere so that you can open the cooler with this closed and without having to take the cooler out. So I just built this simple platform to raise it up just another, you know, three quarters of an inch. So. That's what I did for cooler setup. I'm going to put it back now and go around to the other side. All right, so the cooler's back in place, so the latches work fine. Cooler, no problem. Um, the seat here could still go back quite a ways, um, both travel wise towards the rear of the vehicle and also the back could tilt down still pretty well. My daughter sat there, she's shorter than me, but even with me sitting in there is still plenty of adequate leg room. All right, I'm back to the other side, the driver's side now. Um, same thing, I've shown you the inside of this. We kept our day packs and our only backpacks that we had here, right on top most of the time. We did end up clipping them to these hooks um, after I opened my daughter's, uh, daughter's door and her whole pack had shifted and it fell into a big puddle. So now even if it shifts during driving and it wants to fall out, it's only gonna get so far before it doesn't you know, hit the ground into a big giant puddle. So that worked out there uh, well there. On my side, I had my, my flip-flops stashed in here. 
we did some rafting. I have my Keens tucked under there. This is uh, a steering wheel laptop uh, holder or tray table, if you will, either one. I keep this in my car all the time for doing work at my kids' uh, swim and soccer practices and whatnot. I kept it in here now in case I needed to do some laptop work. Um, and I just sort of tucked it underneath here and it sat here. And what it did was it provided just another another nice little ledge or storage space. I could keep my uh, my regular shoes, my hiking shoes up here if I wanted to. Um, let me show you the water setup. Originally, and I still do have a Scepter five gallon, you know, military style jerry can. Uh, the problem is it doesn't have a nice spout like this. It's got one of those big, long, yellow spouts it's a real pain to use and it's tall and wobbly um, i got this guy for like 20 bucks at walmart it's a reliance brand it holds like seven gallons of water um, it was great and when we wanted to use it it's a little lighter now because there's hardly anything in it pick it up here set it on the edge and then you can fill up whatever you need here. A lot of times we're filling up our water bladders or our water bottles. There's plenty of room to fill up either one. Again, having this ledge here, this kind of, you know, you can put your pack on there or here and fill up your water bottle. Um, it's got a nice vent here to let the water flow a lot more smoothly. And the greatest thing, the best thing is that it stores upright with the spout and the vent at the top. So there's really not much chance of this thing leaking whatsoever. And it tucked in right here, sat nice on the floor. I'm about six foot and uh, maybe a little bit more. And I had no problems with leg room or anything else like that. Uh, the other thing I did buy was the small Jackery uh, Explorer 300. Uh, this thing was really cool. I'd never had one of these before. Used it. Oh, I forgot the fans. Um, <laughs> used it for powering a couple 12 volt fans, uh, charging phones, and that was that was about the extent of it. And that just sat right down here. I did run the car charger for it around through the front down to here, and it just sat there. And if I needed to charge it, I could. Kleenex box, and this is just sort of a bag that had snacks and maps and books and and other things like that in there. So I'm gonna open up uh, this guy again, right here and show you, sorry, it's the garbage man coming by, of course, <laughs> and show you the fans that I got. Okay, I bought two 12 volt fans for camping in here at night, for keeping it cool, keeping air moving. I kept them in here um, simply because I didn't want them bouncing around when we were driving down gravel roads and trails and things like that and breaking. They're not, they're not super heavy duty. They're not, you know, industrial grade or anything like that. Um, but they really, they serve the job well. So, sorry guys. Anyways, we clipped them right up here. Boom. They rotate pretty much. 360 degrees anyway, any direction, up or down, didn't matter. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna haphazardly throw this in here, do like that, turn it on. Um, it's got this little power button here, and it's got three settings, high, low, uh, high, medium, low. So it turns on low, you hit it again for medium, hit it again for high, and it does a good job at moving air. You can aim it wherever you want. Um, the other one went on the other grab handle, um, and they both plugged into here. They both ran all night long, just barely sipping the power. Um, they were great, they were a lifesaver. So. But again, we traveled with them, stowed in here, because I don't like them bouncing around um, up on here. They were just, again, they are like 13 bucks on Amazon or something, pretty cheap.
Uh, the only other oh. thing up here really is going to be these guys. Sorry, I know my camera work sucks. Bear with me. Mag light. These guys, I got them off Amazon. They're uh, the mesh screens for the windows here. These are the Qualizzi Motos Triple XL. Um, I got a pair for the driver's side, a pair for the passenger side, and they just they just slip right over this, and they fit pretty securely on here. Keeps sorry, fits pretty securely on here, and keeps all the bugs out. Had no problems with bugs whatsoever. There weren't a whole lot of bugs, but uh, between the rain guards and the screens. Uh, it was a really great uh, pair of options for keeping airflow moving through here. Um, okay, I'm going to move it to the back now. <clears throat> okay, so again, trifold 4 inch uh, memory foam topper from Amazon. Uh, we just used uh, sleep two sleeping bags for my daughter and I. And then this is actually the bag that the foam mattress came in. We use this for keeping our pillows um, kind of dust free and things like that. Um, the nice thing about the trifold is it allows for deck space back here and deck space in the front of the car or front of the truck um, for keeping stuff around without having it directly on the mattress. It also minimizes the direct amount of contact that the actual mattress top has with any kind of dust or debris uh, in the air if you want to drive with your windows down and things like that. So <clears throat> um, I'll put a couple eye bolts on the side here. Sorry about that. <laughs> with a bungee cord just to keep this stuff secure while moving. Uh, and this was a uh, pop-up bathroom shield thing. So if you wanted to shower in here or use a toilet in here, you could do that. The cargo net. This is the stock one that came with my previous Sequoia. I just threw it in there and ended up being pretty good for keeping stuff like uh, you know, sunscreen or just a, a hand towel, things like that. Over here, I kept a first aid kit, a couple blocks of wood down there. Uh, blocks of wood are for chalking wheels or for using uh, with a bottle jack, which I'll show you in a second. In here was just uh, some gloves. Um, some toilet bags. I got some ratchets or no, jumper cables up here. Uh, things like that. Okay, so one of the big things with the build this box is that I wanted it to be simple and lightweight. And I also built it on the fly with not a lot of plans, so you can kind of see that a little bit here. Um, this keeps the top secured. It goes through the one by and into a two by inside here, and it just pulls right out. It keeps the top from opening this, and it's angled down like this so that it's not going to accidentally fall out, right? So it just goes in there. If I want to make it real secure, I'll jam it up here, and it's pretty tight. But this lid will not open at that point. Okay, so to open this, pull that out, I usually just toss it down there. Uh, I do need to undo the bungee. I'll usually put the bungee up here just for safekeeping for the time being. And this design is very similar to uh, Nathaniel Wise's uh, initial setup in his Sequoia. Um, again, I didn't want a bunch of hooks or giant things like that. So this is just some webbing from a ratchet strap with a simple little S hook tied on there. There's a knot with a washer on the bottom side, and this whole thing just lifts up. So I'm going to set you down while I lift this up. Um, okay, so again, it's just a knot with a washer, and then it goes up to here. And that S hook just goes right through that little hole that's there. There's another one on the driver's side. Boom. The whole thing is up. Um, it's supported. Again, I added some two buys here for uh, rigidity on the sides. 
You may wonder why I've got these angled like this on each side with this, because originally the squared off uh, sheet of plywood would open and the lid would stop about here. And you had very little headroom inside here to get stuff. Um, so I ended up just taking the saw, zipping off each corner, screwing it down, and lifting this part up. It doesn't affect usability at all. It doesn't affect um, sleeping. It doesn't really affect anything. So. At this point, I'll probably gonna show you uh, this here. This is my table that I built. It fits in here perfectly. I kind of angled it so it fit, met the, uh, or matched the angle of this. It sits flush right at the top here. Um, it's really, <laughs> it's really great. Um, I like it a lot. I've seen a lot of different table designs and rollout drawer designs and things like that. And I wanted simplicity. Um, and I think that's what I got here. So I'm gonna show you how I installed that. I'm um, going to install it and then I'll show you how I did it. Okay. There's the table. Uh, the table is, again, it's just a sheet of the leftover uh, 3 8 inch plywood. I did get some aluminum angle and screwed it around here, bent it around the edge. This adds a good amount of rigidity to this where it was real flexible and soft in the middle. It strengthens it up. Uh, the way I attach it, I just got a couple hinges, $2 hinges from the hardware store. Um, remove the pin that's normally in there got a couple cotter pins and this literally comes right off so you just stick it in there and slide your cotter pin in now that's in the supports for it i've seen you know cables running like this before to hold it in place and things like that or like you know a big big table leg or something like that uh didn't really like any of those solutions so uh, what I did, leftover, sorry, garbage guy again, <laughs> figures, leftover two by two, uh, some real rough carpentry here, just made a peg hole, and you just, sorry, you just stick it in there, and it just sits right on that there. Doesn't really matter which way it's going. Yeah, I might have a best way, but it really doesn't matter. And it sits flush, cut it flush. And this thing, I wouldn't sit on it, but it's not going anywhere. Cooking, working, not going anywhere. Um, the other thing that this is handy for is I take it off and I needed to tighten up my um, anti-sway bar linkage on one side. It works, it makes a great uh, impromptu uh, creeper. Something to lay on the ground besides the asphalt, besides the wet ground, besides the rough gravel on the, you know, the side of a road. It, it makes it a good space just to lay on, which I had to do unfortunately more than once, um, but it's great for that too, you know. So here's my table, way in the back here, uh, the big red bag. That's my tools, all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, behind it, I got this rag. Uh, way in the corner there in the white is a uh, hydraulic bottle jack from an old Land Rover. It's got a, sorry, a U-shaped uh, cradle, which is great for axles and other things. I've got the stock spare, you know, kit for lowering the spare down. In the black husky bag, I've got uh, some ratchet straps, bungees. I've got a Sven saw here in case we needed to cut any wood. It was super dry. We ended up not doing any fire since it was it was too dry, and I didn't want to. I didn't really want to take any issues with it. In this small red bag right there is some recovery gear. Rag just threw in there. Um, 
our trekking poles, when we weren't using them, they were stowed right in here. These were filled with kitty litter. Um, if we needed to use the washroom in some place remote, I have a toilet and some bags and we're gonna throw some kitty litter in there. I ended up using it to soak up some antifreeze when I had to make a roadside repair. So that actually came in, in handy anyways. In here is all my cooking, uh, pots, pans, spoons, wash kit, cutting board, knives, uh, tin foil, you name it, it was all in there. Some extra Ziplocs, heavy duty um, four mil Ziplocs. And in here is my stove. It's a liquid, liquid gas, so a camp fuel stove. It's a little bulky, it's a two burner, but honestly I like it because I can't stand carrying propane around with me, whether it's a, a five gallon tank or I mean, a five pound tank or a bunch of those little cylinders. It's just, it kills me how much space they suck up. Um, whereas with, I'm gonna set this down for a second so I can get it out. All right, whereas with this guy, everything is in here. This is the fuel tank. I keep it wrapped to keep from rattling. Um, the fuel tank originally is here, full. And then in here, I kept a whole other bottle of camp fuel. And it's all stowed within itself, no extra room. This camp fuel, it lasts a really long time, in my opinion, from my experience. Um, it doesn't burn quite as clean as propane, uh, but I've never had a problem with it working or <laughs> doing anything other than, than what it should. And again, it, because it can't, you know, stows completely, completely in itself. No extra bonds, so. That's that. Put some of the stuff back, which is the other side. Roll of paper towels. Uh, these go back over here. More Ziploc bags. We use them for all sorts of stuff, so why not? Um, it's a little haphazard because we're at the end of the trip. Some wet ones, um, bathroom duty or hand duty, whatever it may be. This was our snack bin. So almost all of our lunches were like trail lunch, trail food. And we have so much extra, it's ridiculous. Beef jerky, uh, I'll put this aside for later. Um, dried fruit, all kinds of stuff. Basically, so all our, all our snack trail food was in there. More wet wipes, more garbage bags. Um, sorry, again, it's a bit of a mess, end of the trip. Um, sorry. Headlamps, I did have a couple other lamps. Um, you can see them tucked up in the corner right in there. Those were our lanterns that just hung from the grab handles. Sorry. <laughs> Grab handles, um, toilet kit. So we had a little titanium trowel, uh, wipes, bags, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. Uh, in here we had duct tape, paracord, um, like a, another cord with a bag for throwing a bear bag if we needed to, head net, some tape for my blisters that I got. Um, Couple, couple small towels in this bag here. Uh, use those a lot. We did some cliff jumping and uh, way water rafting and things like that. So those came in big handy. These things, I love these things. I got one for my daughter this year. It's flex light chairs. Um, take them usually on most hikes I do because the ability to sit down at the end of your hike and enjoy some time at the lake or the mountaintop or whatever it is, is kind of invaluable to me. Here's mine. It's stored over there as well. Mine's considerably heavier and I have to steal hers. <laughs> uh, hiking first aid kit that was usually in my day pack. Uh, another little bag. Carabiners, bear bells, little extra tape, pack towel, uh, hooks. Sorry, I'm terrible at camera work. Headlamps. Um, up here we had, had 
a couple mountain, you know, dehydrated stuff like emergency food here, a couple stuff sacks, uh, a couple air mattresses, and a tent if we decided to do a little bit more uh, remote camping. I had a couple spots picked out. It didn't work out because it was like 95 degrees out and I wasn't, we didn't camp the whole time. We hoteled a little bit and I'm gonna sweat in here. <laughs> Uh, and then this was dry goods, dry food. We brought home so much food, uh, you know, tortillas and cans of soup and uh, garbanzo beans for chickpea hash and granola. And it's all the dry food went in here um, like that. So I'm gonna make an attempt to put my rear hatch down and show you one last thing before we button this up. Oh yeah, this guy. This is a, it's a Katadin B Free bottle. This thing was really cool. Um, bought it a while ago, never used it. And then we use it on this trip a lot. We hike to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. We will hike down the Gunnison Trail to the bottom of it. We're able to fill this up right in the Gunnison River, drink from it. It's got like a built in uh, filter here. It was really cool. It was great. We go on a hike to Mountain Lake or any hike with a stream. We bring this, it weighs almost nothing, it packs down to almost nothing, and you can drink fresh mountain stream water, which is probably clean. You probably don't have to worry about it, but it gives you a little peace of mind having that built-in filter there. Flow rate's great. You just squeeze the bag and it squeezes into your mouth. So these things are really cool. I, this is one of my, uh, my purchases that I'm really happy with. Um, Okay, and then the last thing I want to show you is our my waste bucket, my waste bag, and all that stuff. I am going to take this table down. So again, take the table down, pull the pin, pull the other pin, um, just grab that, grab that, and then this whole thing goes... Right in there like that. Fits great. The uh, the pins, they stow right in there. These guys I just throw in there. Put the other pin back here. Okay. Uh, put, the, put the back down now, show you the rest of it. So this is my trash roof. I've had this thing forever. I've got an old 94 Land Rover Discovery with an externally mounted spare tire. Used it on there. Wanted to make it work for this because I wasn't a big fan of keeping garbage inside the truck. And in a few of the areas we were going to go, you had to pack out your own waste. And not a huge fan of keeping human waste inside the vehicle either. Um, so this is the trash charu. Normally, like I said, it goes around the spare tire. No spare tire. I didn't want to have it going sorry, all the way over the top of the gate and then down underneath and wrapping it around there and having straps all against the paint and everything. I just, it just bugged me. Um, the other issue with that is anytime you put a strap on the outside and have it going to the inside when it's raining like it is now, it's gonna drip water inside the vehicle, which is no good. So what I did for this, I put both the straps I took them both, I routed them through between the hatch and the body. There's almost no room. You have to you have to close this a certain amount to get any kind of gap in there whatsoever. So that's what I did. So I closed it partially, ran these things through, and then I've got the clips. So it's really just the clips that are holding these in place and the tight tolerance in here that's preventing this whole bag from falling off. One there, one there. I ran the uh, straps down the side here in the channel and then across the top, same thing over here. Again, keeps the water from wicking its way into the side of the vehicle. Um, and it worked great. 3,000, 3,500 miles on the back, no problem. Almost. Almost didn't sit on the body at all, almost entirely on the window. It's 
pretty heavy right now because it's been raining and pouring, but it's still on there. Um, and what I have in here, I'll try to get it out. It flips up. That one does. I kept our toilet. Sorry, I know. Turn the camera work. Kept our toilet in here. Trip tips. It's a little plastic, black plastic, collapsible toilet. It's actually really slick. Here, um, got it on Amazon. Was was fairly cheap. Sorry. All right. Didn't have to use it, but. What else is in here is a gamma bucket. I'll pull it out real quick. Sorry, I'm gonna set you down again, I know. So that was inside the focusing there we go that was inside the uh, trasher room two and a half gallon Menards bucket gamma lid gamma seal lid it just mm, unscrews it's got a rubber gasket seal there and then inside here I had a trash compactor bag over the side it's got a bunch of coolant in here now for a repair I had to do I just Again, I threw it under the truck to catch the coolant. I threw the dirty rag in here. You can see it's all pink from the coolant. Um, when that thing just stayed up there, it's pretty smell proof. And if a bear were to come and get it, I wouldn't be heartbroken and hopefully wouldn't destroy my vehicle. So that's, uh, that's about it. I, I hope you enjoyed it. hope it gives you my, some ideas. Um, yeah, worked great. I loved it. Uh, sleeping in the truck was a, a new experience for me. This air mattress made it great. The trifold here, as you can see, I can have the back up. Still have space here. Doesn't restrict it at all. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.